Hello everybody, this is Noah, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of the DJI Mavic Mini. And so this is actually the Fly More combo, as you can see there. And so this includes a couple more accessories that you wouldn't get with the standard edition. It's about $100 more. Um, normally it comes with the drone, the controller, uh, one battery, and that's it. And then the cables, of course, to run it. Um, but the Fly More combo comes with a nice case that's padded for your drone. Uh, this uh, propeller protector, so you can fly indoors. Two extra batteries and a portable battery charger. And so I'll be going over all of those today um, in the video. So stay tuned. So on the front of the box, on one side you have everything it includes. And on the other side you just have like just a minimalist picture of the drone. Very Apple-esque. Um, and then you got some information on the other sides here. I'll try and focus that for you guys. So if you want to read that, you can pause the video. And then the other side. And there's nothing on the top or the bottom, so let's just crack it right open and get into it. So we're going to open up the top here. And I will just show you everything as I unbox it. All right, so we got a little tag right here. From DJI. And this looks like... This kind of just looks like a sales tag. Honestly, and then it would appear that the drone is, comes packaged in the case that it comes with. So I'm gonna move that aside for a second so we can get everything else out of the box. Um, got a pretty big box here, but it feels kind of light. All right. All right. So for the reason for that feeling light is it's actually the propeller protectors, and they are a lot lighter than they look. These are like super lightweight. Which makes sense because you don't want to adding a whole bunch of extra weight to the drone. Um, but I'm going to set these aside for a sec. And we got some more down in the box here. And then it looks like I got everything out now except for a little gel packet and a spacer. So I'm going to move this off the table. Alright, so it looks like we got a plug here. Nice little DJI plug. Looks like this is probably the documentation, it would seem. All right, so lots of little documentation. Fly more combo. We got a little quick start guide. We got what looks like this is an accessories guide. We have disclaimer and safety guidelines. Um. looks like general warnings just a little general warning card and this looks like a little warranty guide so it looks like we got a 5 volt 3 amp charger and it can also do 9 volt 2 amp and 12 volt 1.5 amp in case you were curious all right and we got the batteries here if you want to take a look at any of the battery technical specs, feel free to pause the video. And probably what you've been waiting for is we can get this Mavic out of the box. Very nice. So this is nice, hard shell, but padded, in case you were wondering. And we have the drone right here. This thing is super small and light. In fact, it almost feels like the battery is heavier than this whole drone which is pretty crazy. So let's get this stuff off the drone here. There's a little note on there that says remove the gimbal protector before taking off. Because you don't want to take off with this gimbal protector. It kind of blocks the gimbal from working, can damage the motors. Got little stickers here to keep the propellers in place. This just says charge to activate the battery before first time use. So you'll probably just want to charge it up to make sure you have a full battery before running for the first time. Pretty much common sense there. But here is the drone itself. Got the propellers flooping around. There goes the gimbal protector. I don't think that was clipped on properly. It's probably maybe when I took the sticker off it dislodged it a little bit. Let's weigh this and see how much we got. So without the battery in it. The unit weighs 155 grams, and the battery itself weighs 97 grams. So I think it was just 
me tricking myself into thinking the battery was heavier because the battery does have quite a bit of heft to it but it's probably just because it's so small i thought it was heavier together they should weigh interesting it says 251 grams even though it technically should be 249 grams it's what it's supposed to weigh so that you can avoid having to register with the faa um if you're ever going to be like, flying over a large group of people you always want to get permission though um, and definitely check brush up on your FAA guidelines so you make sure you're not breaking any rules before you fly this anywhere because just because it isn't doesn't have a required FAA registration um, doesn't mean you shouldn't follow up on the guidelines because you still could be penalized if um, you hurt anybody or you break any uh, guidelines in your area so always be aware of your area's guidelines so basically you want to do is fold the front ones out first and then fold the back ones and you have the full uh, fully realized drone and then you just clip the battery in like this it goes in right like that and then you clip the door closed like that and then maybe it'll weigh 249 now well it somehow went down a gram maybe that was the stickers I had on it but it should oh it's the gimbal protector interesting I must say that the gimbal protector is a little bit finicky so you kinda have to play around with that to get it to lock in there and keep that protected um, to fold it back up, you just always do the back ones first, and then the, uh, the top ones, or the front ones, I guess how you're holding it. So yeah, this is the Mavic drone itself. It's very, very tiny. Um, when you see them putting it in their pocket in some of the commercials the DJI has for it, I mean, that's not entirely false. I think you could definitely fit this in a pocket. However, I probably wouldn't be comfortable with doing that just because of the propellers. Maybe if I had some kind of propeller protector, I'd be okay with doing that. But considering that I have the uh, case here. I don't really find it that um, necessary to put it in my pocket. I definitely could just carry it around in this. Um, if you guys followed me for a while, you know that um, I had the Phantom 2 before this, and let me say, like just this case alone is about the same size as the Phantom 2, if smaller. So like this thing is really, really portable. Um, definitely practical to, for transportation, or if you're just gonna like bring it somewhere on vacation with you it won't take up that much space in your luggage um and yeah it's its size is its biggest uh advantage because this thing can get into smaller places um because it's lighter it doesn't drain the battery as fast as some of these bigger drones because you have bigger drones that are heavier and then you need a bigger battery and that adds more weight and so like you end up with the same time with a huge drone when you could have that same time with a smaller drone that is um you know easier to easier to transport and easier to get into smaller places and I wanted something like that and that's why I went with the Mavic here I was actually torn between this and the Mavic uh, 2 Air the Mavic 2 Air is about double this one's price but it has 4k uh, I believe 30 frames if not 60 frames per second um, so I was definitely torn between this and that uh, I ultimately went with this one because I didn't want to uh, you know, break the bank on a really expensive drone. And for my needs, this one's a lot more practical and more fun. Um, you may see probably little uh, of this drone in my channel for like videos, but for fun and like recording, um, you know, wildlife and things like that, I'll be using this drone for more like, you know, personal footage purposes. All right, so inside here is an extra set of propellers. I'm just going to keep this boxed up because I don't actually need these. It already has a set on there, and I'm only going to replace them if they break. So I'm just going to leave those in the box. But just know that it's two extra sets, so it would be enough to replace all the propellers on the drone. And then in here you have all your cables. Ah, everything's packaged. So we got an extra set of thumbsticks, and I'll show you where those go in a second. These are your connector cables that you're going to connect to your phone to the controller with. This is your cable to connect your drone to the computer or to charge your controller with. Looks like another one of the same cables. Uh, just a little screwdriver so you can take off the propellers or um, you know unscrew anything you need to unscrew. This is the um, battery charger. And then how this works is you have multiple ways you can charge your batteries here. You have the drone itself where you can you know, plug your battery into the drone and you can charge the drone's battery using the drone with this cable here, or using, uh, with this cable to, in this port here. Um, alternatively, if you have the fly more combo, you can plug them into this charging dock. This will actually um, allow you to put all three batteries in here. You can plug it in using this uh, micro USB port 
and you can um, charge it up from there and it will charge all three of the batteries. When you're charging with this dock, it'll actually charge the, the battery that's closest to full, so you'll be ready for a full flight, which is kind of a unique feature. Um, and then you can also plug in your phone into this USB port if you wanted to use the dock as like a power bank to charge up your phone if your phone's running low. I don't think it actually has any charge in it though because it is not turning on right now. So they probably just shipped it dead and then you have to charge it up yourself. Uh, short press to see the battery life on your batteries. Long press to switch between charging the batteries and charging your phone, which is pretty neat. And that's what I mentioned before using the USB port here. Um, that was pretty much the unboxing portion of this video. Um, the next portion is going to be the actual uh, you know, flight portion and uh, you know, set up outside so you can see how this drone operates and takes off and just a couple of cool features that this drone has. So stay tuned. Uh, if that's all you're looking for is the unboxing, you can leave the video now, but if you want to see more features about the drone, you know, stick around for a little bit. All right, everybody. So this is what we're going to need for the first flight. You're going to need your Mavic and a smartphone with the DJI Fly app installed. And so once you get past everything for your app, you're going to get to this screen. And once you're on this screen, you can just hold that there, and we will get back to that in a second. So we're going to open the Mavic. And if you're flying, you want to make sure you have a battery installed. I actually already have one installed inside the drone. And so that would be right here. And in order to install that, you just literally slide it in until you hear a click, close the door, you're good to go. Then you're going to unfold starting with the top propellers first, and then you're going to unfold back the bottom propellers here. And then also do not forget to take this off. You can damage the camera if you leave the protector on during flight. So make sure to take that off. And actually to start up the drone, what you're going to want to do is press and hold this button right here. And you should hear the motor start up and hear a beep from the drone. So there's that right there. And uh, my mistake, you actually press it once and then press and hold it in order to get it to start up. And then you have your controller here. In order to get this set up, what you want to do is pop off the propeller here, or the, not the propellers, the antennas here. And then you want to unfold these two wings pretty much all the way out, unless you have a smaller phone. And then under here are your little thumbsticks that you're going to screw on. You just turn those clockwise, and they only have a couple rotations in order to get them locked down, just like so. And then make sure you have the right cable installed for your phone here. In my case, it's USB-C, and it's really easy to swap them out. You just, you know, unplug them, plug them back in, and they only plug in one way, so you can't mess it up. Thankfully, USB-C is double-sided, so it doesn't really matter um, how your phone's going to sit here. But what you're going to do is plug it into your phone like so, and then it just kind of squeezes your phone in order to get it to hold it. So my phone has a case on it, and it's just about um, too thick for the controller, but the controller does hold it. It's not going anywhere. So it does, it's not perfect, but... Um, the lips here should grab most phones, and if not, you can always take the case off and um, just have it hug your phone without a case on it. And then you're going to do the same exact process you did for the drone for the controller. You're going to press once and then press and hold again. You'll hear another beep, and you'll wait for those lights to go solid. And that will mean that it's connected to the drone. We can now move this out of the way. You'll see that your phone becomes charged because the controller charges your phone while you're connected. And as you can see here, it's trying to pull up camera footage from the drone itself. Right there. Um, as you can see here. So it's telling me right now I'm in a no-fly zone, which actually means that this thing is always looking for a GPS signal. And it knows where the no-fly zones are in your area, probably better than you do. And it's saying that mine is in a caution zone, which means that I'm not allowed to fly more than 150 meters in the air. And it's restricted by the software here if you try to fly more than that. I'm near a helipad, which is the reason for that on this app. If you're in an open field or like in a you know rural location, you're probably not ever going to see that um, pop up. 
but you know if you're near a city you might have more restrictions and you can always fly the drone um you just it'll cap it at 150 meters at least for my uh exclusion area um and but it wouldn't it will never like restrict you from flying the drone but you should always be cautious and look at faa regulations if you're not sure right now it's in a ready to fly state and there's a couple ways you can get it to fly when you point them down here it will do a manual takeoff it'll start the rotors so they're at the lowest power but they're still spinning um which actually i'm not going to take off but i could demonstrate what that looks like right now what it looks like is this so now you hear that it's ready for takeoff if you want to power them back down just like that so that's actually the emergency shutoff for the propellers um, you kind of want to be careful because you can emergency shut off from anywhere if you hold the sticks like that. So normally if you're in the air, it has the sensors on the bottom here that will tell it that it's a certain distance from the ground. It tries to stay always a foot off the ground. And so um, when you hover over the ground, it'll begin to slow its descent and then it will hold even if you continue, continue to move it the stick down. And... Um, after a couple of seconds of holding the stick down, it will realize that you're trying to land and then it will slowly descend where you can make, you know, little adjustments to make sure it lands just, just in the right spot. Um, but yeah, that's the manual takeoff and manual motor shutoff. But you would, uh, if you're, you know, uncomfortable with doing that, you can always do the automatic takeoff, which is right here. And what you do is you tap that icon here and then you press and hold takeoff. What this will do is it will start the motors and it will take the drone off to one foot in the air without any adjustments of the sticks necessary. So they do make a lot of software um, inclusions to make sure that you can easily um, fly the drone even if you're not an experienced pilot. From the controller here, you have the record button. And what this will do is if it's not on video, mo video mode, it'll change it to video mode and you can press this to record. Same thing with this button over here, except this is for take a picture. And they just take a picture with the stock settings you have. Um, and then right here is actually the gimbal control. So you can point the gimbal down using the dial here. Doesn't seem to be, yeah. I think because of all my electronic devices and it's kind of location inside my house, it might be um, having a little shoddy video connection. But as you can see, yeah, it's angling the gimbal using this dial here. And you can actually set the speed of how fast it angles that in the settings if you want it to go faster or slower. And then right here, um, you have pretty much the same buttons as here and here. Just the uh, picture where you can switch to uh, this. That was actually the footage where you can check your recorded footage. And you can actually download footage from the app here, which is really cool. Um, that way you don't have to plug the SD card into a computer or anything like that. But um, you can hit this button here, sorry, that does the video. And um, you can also do quick shot or photo mode, and then you can also do timed shot if you want to line something up and not have to worry about hitting the camera button. Um, and then you have three modes in the uh, speed settings right here at the top. And there's mode P, which is for position, where the drone tries to maintain the best position while having a balance between um, stable footage and uh, quick movements. Then you have sport mode, which this is where the drone will basically move at its maximum um, acceleration, and it will in any direction pretty much. It'll it will go as fast as it can in any direction, and it will try to get to its top speed as quickly as possible. And then cinematic mode, where it kind of keeps everything on a lower power state, so that you can. Um, get smoother shots it doesn't really let you make adjustments very quickly so you can only really um, change the you know pitcher roll by about five degrees or so and that's so that when you're getting like pans they aren't like really fast or jittery um, it's really helpful if you're trying to get just like a slow nice cinematic shot you, you can access your map settings here I'm not gonna pull that up because it'll just show my location but um, you can basically see exactly where your drone is where the start point is where there's any no-fly zones if you're near one um, and then um, where your drone currently is positioned and facing with the arrow of where it's facing being where the front of the drone is pointing um, we can check out some test footage right now and you can see what that looks like all right guys the key to getting some good test footage is being patient having a shot in mind and just keep in mind that every time you record anything 80% of what you record is probably just going to be setting up the shot you were looking to get. So 
really you got to be you know editing and sorting through your footage most of the time to get those perfect shots where you have a great pan or a great like pullback or you know a spiral shot you know a lot of these shots that you think look great you're going to spend 80 percent of your time trying to set them up and so like pretty much what you see here is about you know six minutes worth of footage but what this actually was was you know around two uh, flights with about an hour's worth of flying in order to set up these shots um, it's not like they just you know come right away you gotta be practiced and diligent and you know know have in mind what kind of shot you're trying to get because without that you know you're just gonna have maybe hours of footage that's kind of useless to you so um, yeah just keep in mind that you know a lot of what the footage you get you're going to take is not going to be usable but that's just part of the process when you're getting you know b-roll or any kind of um, footage with the drone and then the picture um, functionality is very great uh, it's nice that you can you know just fly it up in the air I'm pro I'll probably end up using that a lot just because you can get some really nice pictures from the air and you know it's so quick to be able to just set up the drone fly it take some pictures land it you can do this all in the time span you know 10 minutes and that's just really convenient something that this drone does a really good job of um, so yeah, pretty much this drone has my wholehearted recommendation. If you're stuck between buying um, the Mavic Mini and the Mavic uh, Air 2, I'll offer this piece of advice. I was actually between the two also, and ultimately what sold me was the portability and um, the fact that you really don't need to be for filming in 4K most of the time. Like, I understand, you know, 4K is right now pretty much the best medium you can get. Yes, the Mavic Air has a better camera. Yes, it can go faster. But, you know, if you really look at what um, you're looking for in a drone, you may realize that you don't need that 4K footage and you don't need that extra speed boost you get with the Mavic Air 2 um, for what your purposes are. Like, you know, the Mavic Mini is just a really, really great consumer drone. It doesn't require that much setup. It comes with everything you need to get started, to film great shots. The camera quality is spectacular. You know, I, I was coming from a GoPro, you know, Hero 3 Plus Black, and that camera I thought was really good at the time, but you know, this camera, which is maybe, you know, a tenth the weight and like a fifth the size of the GoPro Hero 3, it's taking better footage in 2K than the GoPro is ever recording in 1080p, so it really isn't all about, always about that resolution. Yes, you're gonna get a camera upgrade, yes, you're gonna get a speed upgrade with the Mavic Air 2, but you know, you gotta ask yourself, is that really worth double the cost that it would get, that it would be to buy the Mavic Mini? And for me, it really wasn't. It, it's, um, I, I didn't wanna spend an extra $500 on, you know, a plethora of features that I probably wouldn't be utilizing. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this test footage and this video, um, but that's about all I got for today. So enjoy whatever's left of the footage, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.